Imagine that you're in a waiting room in a doctor's office, browsing a collection of medical brochures. Just before you're called in, you notice one's cover boasting that if you follow its contents, you could live as long and healthy of a life as you desire, without limitation, even eternally if you so choose. It would stand to reason that you may pluck said brochure from its tray, even if just out of skepticism and curiosity. When you see the doctor, you inquire about what seems to be a rather incredible claim coming from a brochure found in a legitimate medical institution. To your surprise, your trusted doctor vouches for the brochure and insists that you follow its specific instructions. And if you do so, it will no doubt provide you with a blueprint for as long and healthy of a life as you wish, including immortality if you so choose. At this point, your doctor advises you to read the brochure from cover to cover, every word of it. Read it daily. Use it as flawless guidance for a healthy life. He does warn you that some of the writing is a bit dry, including terminologies difficult for a medical layperson to understand. So complex, in fact, that there's even dispute amongst medical professionals as to exactly how some of the nuances of the text should be specifically followed. Your doctor assures you, however, that his interpretation is correct and suggests that you come to a weekly session he offers, wherein he will spend one to two hours talking about the brochure, explaining it to lay people so that they can benefit from its teachings. The session is technically free, though you are encouraged to donate 10% of your time, talent, and money to the brochure's author and to the doctor for supplying you with this generous advice. Perhaps you attend these sessions, but find that only a fraction of the brochure is even covered by the doctor's explanations. Though he ensures you that as long as you keep attending the weekly meetings and follow its teachings, you shall have everlasting life. Sound familiar? Well, answer me this. Under those circumstances, might you bother to actually read the pamphlet in question in its entirety on your own? I mean, it wouldn't be that much work, right? Even if you had trouble understanding some of it, given the stakes that we're dealing with, might you do what it takes to figure it out? Might you do some independent research until you felt satisfied with your understanding of the text? What if it were more than just a brochure, a magazine, a novella, a book, or even a series of books? Might it be amongst the most important things you could ever read or possibly ever do, especially if you're genuinely convinced that its contents are true? Wouldn't that mean that there would be no such thing as an excuse of not having time or being too busy that could possibly stop you? And what if I told you that the majority of the United States of America believes that a book exists which provides them with instructions to indulge in an eternal paradise? Not only that, but what, that the alternative to not correctly following its instructions is eternal damnation and fiery torment. They believe this so fervently that most of them distrust and despise those who don't believe it more than any other demographic just for not believing that book or any other books with similar claims. Not only this, but this book is available in every bookstore, most shopping marts across the country, can be borrowed for free from any library and taken for free from nearly any hotel room from coast to coast. Doesn't it seem bizarre that this number one selling book in the land of the free and the home of the brave is actually hardly read from cover to cover by any of its citizens? Would you believe that many prefer to spend multiple hours of the day for multiple days of the week sitting on padded benches, making donations, and listening to someone read and talk about random passages from this book to them without ever reading it from start to finish for themselves? You may have heard people like me claim that actually reading the Bible independently without someone selecting and ignoring certain parts for you, offering apologetics for what's supposed to be divinely inspired flawless text, is one of the best ways of deconverting a Christian. Seems kind of strange, don't you think? I think that even if you skipped church for one year and spent one to two hours of each of those 52 Sundays studying the Bible for yourself, you'd probably achieve a great deal more knowledge about your religion than you do in a church service chock full of filler like singing hymns and having text interpreted for you, anecdotes about reality, sending prayers and praises to a God whose text you haven't even read yet, and of course, the time carefully set aside for a guilt trip and the passing of the collection plate. Do you think a logical, rational, intelligent God would want you spending your time doing those things or actually studying his word for yourself? 
Do you really believe he prefers you to sing and praise and worship him without fully understanding what you're praying to and praising? I don't think that sounds like a rational, logical God at all. Then again, neither does the God described in the aforementioned book, but you wouldn't know about that, would you?